Bring in Marwan Bashara. He's Al Jazeera senior political analyst. He's speaking to us today from Paris. Marwan, we've been talking a lot about impunity. How do you think the international reaction we've seen so far is going over in Israel? No, I think we are closer to divine intervention uh, than international intervention or an, even an outcry uh, that would put an end to Israel's impunity in the occupied territories. Uh, those who really care uh, don't have the ability, and those uh, who have the ability, such as the United States, don't exactly care. All what they say is that they will keep on watching or something, as if watching will make any difference to the life of a child or to the survival of a family in a refugee camp. So all in all, what we have thus far are a lot of empty words and meaningless condemnations that are not leading to much. And in fact, if you hear the Israelis clearly, they are saying that there are no pressures on them to end their operation. Hmm. Well, Israel has been saying they're not there to occupy the refugee camp, that this isn't an operation against the Palestinian Authority. What do you make of that choice of words? I think this part of the spin uh, I've written extensively about it uh, on our uh, Al Jazeera online. Um, a lot of the Israelis use these kind of code words. We've heard some of them from our guests earlier about mourning the loan and about maintenance and, and about how the Israelis uh, use weapons to protect their civilians while the Palestinians use civilians to protect their weapons. All these smart ways of scoring points. While the bigger picture, the bigger point is that we are involved in a asymmetrical uh, warfare conflict now between Israel and the Palestinians. And that includes asymmetry of values. The Palestinians want freedom, freedom of occupation. They want freedom of fear. They want to have their own state. The Israelis want control, and they want more illegal settlements. So all in all, the asymmetry is really at the heart of this thing. And just allow me just two seconds to explain this to our international viewers. Because here, this is not a conflict, it's not a warfare that's happening between equal sides. We have an occupier and unoccupied. And we have it set in a colonial setting, meaning this has been going on for decades, while one side, the Israeli side, is not just occupying the Palestinian territories. They're also settling them. They're colonializing it illegally, according to international law, with their own population. Up to six, seven hundred thousand illegal settlers today in the occupied territories. And three, this is just happening not between two equal forces. One is a standing army, one of the most formidable armies in the world, supported and armed by the United States and others. And the others are a bunch of guys who are trying to protect their neighborhoods. Some of them, you know, might actually join this and that to get some cover, but they're actually just a bunch of teenagers trying to protect their neighborhood and their families. And fourth and last, as, and that's where I started, is all what they want is freedom from fear, freedom from the settlers stealing their land, stealing their water, stealing their livelihood. So at the end of the day, Israel is looking for control. Israel is looking for occupation, for illegal settlements, while the Palestinians are looking for freedom. So a totally asymmetrical dynamics going on here, which the world needs to see clearly that this is not something they could be indifferent to. A, a country like the United States, an administration that says we will put human rights at the center of our foreign policy, well, excuse me, where is that? Uh, Marwan, it does feel, as we talk, that Janin has become a symbol in itself of resistance. Is that then part of Israeli thinking in, in terms of its strategy with these incursions, do you think? Well, they've certainly been trying for decades now uh, to take on Janin. Uh, as we, again, we've heard throughout the day, uh, this, been, this had just happened last year. Let's all remember our dear colleague that was killed right there. And let's remember what's happening in the previous years. And we mentioned 2002 when the second intifada started. We've been having the uprising of the ghetto of Jenin. And I hope that will remind people of other ghetto uprisings. And certainly we've been having that even 20 years earlier in 1982, 
when Sharon, then defense minister, certainly did his own share of incursions into Jenin and, of course, to the Hebron and, and Gaza and so on and so forth. So there's been an ongoing uh, war of attrition against Palestinians, against Palestinian families, against Palestinian livelihood, but also against Palestinian resistance. And that has not succeeded, which begs the question, is there a method to this madness? Or are the Israelis simply repeating the same, expecting different results, and it's not coming? Which, as we all know, or as the cliché goes, is a sign of craziness. Uh, Marwan, I'm wondering where public opinion is now. We've seen protests against Netanyahu and his proposed judicial reforms even today. I'm curious as to where public feeling now is in, in Israel as these, these increasingly drastic actions, it seems, are, are taken by the government. Unfortunately, the main opposition figures, um, like the former defense minister Gantz, who, you know, was carpet bombing Gaza, and his uh, other colleague uh, Yair Lapid, who now frames the assault on Jenin as part of some kind of a proxy war with Iran, do not allow for a serious discussion, a debate within Israel. And hence, we've seen the Israelis more preoccupied with their own uh, problems with the Netanyahu government and his fascio fanatic partners that are trying to impose illiberal judicial reforms in Israel, so much so that they seem incapable of connecting why the occupation is leading to more fascism and illiberalism in Israel. They're not capable of doing that. They're not able to connect the dots that the occupation is the main source of radicalism within the Israel society. And that is what will probably be taking away rights from Israeli Jews, as it is taking now rights from the Palestinians. The other public opinion, by the way, which I think is really key here, we haven't talked about it, is that in the United States, notably in the, in the Democratic Party yeah. that today is ruling in the White House, right? This is the first year, 2023, that we see, according to Gallup poll, that 49 percent of the Democratic Party base that is led by none other than Joe Biden, 49 percent support the Palestinians vis-a-vis 38 -vis percent of the Democratic Party base that support Israel. We have, a, we have almost a majority of Democratic Party members, mm -hmm. many of them who are Jewish Americans, that support the Palestinians against Israel. A really interesting time indeed. Marwan Bashara, Al Jazeera senior political analyst, speaking to us today from Paris. Thank you for joining us again, Marwan. Always great to get your thoughts.